Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance here with a how-to video today. Uh, today what we're going to look at is changing out a receptacle or an outlet or a plug, whatever you call it. Uh, let me know down in the comment what you prefer to call it or maybe if you're from somewhere besides the United States, what do you call this? Uh, I call it a receptacle, but I know most people call it plug or outlet a lot of times. And I wanted to do this video for a couple of reasons, and it's this is primarily going to be for the homeowner. I know that most guys out there in the maintenance field or an electrician or a handyman, you've probably changed out hundreds, if not thousands of these in the course of your career. I know I've probably changed out thousands. Uh, just in this job alone, I'm probably changing out close to 50. And there's a couple things within this plug that I wanna talk about as we change them. But maybe you're a homeowner and you wanna change from, say you have an almond plug and you wanna change out to white. Uh, or maybe you want to change out an outlet to, that has a standard plug on the top and then has two USB ports on the bottom by your nightstand uh, so that you can plug up your phones. Or maybe you wanna change it out to a smart plug so that you can control a device with your Alexa or with your Google Mini. Uh, whatever it is, it's the same process no matter what you're doing. Uh, also, another thing, there's a couple issues with this plug that I'll talk about. Maybe you have a plug where the cover looks like this. You can see how that's set in there too far. I'll show you how to fix that as well. So if that's an issue that you've got and you want to fix that, I'll show you that. But the first thing you always want to do when working with electricity is you want to turn off the power. You don't want to work on it with it live. Occasionally you have to, but it's not safe, and I definitely don't recommend it to those who aren't comfortable with that. Uh, so the first thing though, before I turn off the power, if I'm working on an outlet, what I like to do is I like to take an outlet tester like this one. This is the Klein Tools ET310. It's the transmitter part of uh, my breaker finder, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, but this is also a plug tester. And you plug it in and it lights up and it'll tell you the condition of the wiring of this plug. You can see I've got two solid lights here and that tells me that I have the correct wiring. So before I pull a plug out, remove the wires off the side, I like to know was it wired right in the first place because I don't want to put a plug in, wire it up and think that it was right to start with and then I check it and think I did something wrong because there's no guarantee that the wires in here will be black and white. I might would have two blues. I could have a red and a white. I could have a blue and a red. You can never go by wire colors. Now, typically, you will have a black and a white, and the black is normally the line in or the hot wire, and the white would be the neutral. But we know that right now it is correctly wired as it sits. So now I'll leave this in. That's gonna send a signal to my receiver. I'll turn this on and we can go to the breaker panel and shut this power off. So I'll see you at the breaker panel. So now that we're at the panel, you just take the receiver and you start by calibrating it by going down each and every breaker. It's recommended in the instructions that you go through the whole panel one time and then come back See, I got a little bit of a thing up there, but that doesn't mean that that's where it is. I need to keep on going. And then now that I've went through one time, I can go back and check. And I'm gonna start on this side because I know where it's at. You can see as I slowly go down and I get to here, it's telling me that's the breaker. So we'll flip that breaker off, go back and check our plug. And we can now see that I have no lights on my plug, meaning I have no power here. Now you can go ahead and go the extra step, get a meter out and check it to make you feel comfortable about it. But I know that this is the breaker. I've had this off previously before. So now we'll remove this and we'll start by removing the plug. Let me get this set up here, hopefully so where you can see better. And a couple things I want you to notice is Look how these ears are barely making any kind of contact with the drywall and that's causing this to not be tight and that's also part of the reason why we have 
a plug that is inset past the plate farther than what it needs to be. So again, I'll show you how to fix that as we go on, but we need to start by removing the existing outlet. And you can see a lot of texture on this outlet. Uh, they've retextured all the walls in this building and they knew we were gonna change out all these plugs so they told them they could go ahead and just spray on top of these. So I'll pull out the wires. You can see that we have a black, a white, and a ground wire. Uh, black would be the line in or the hot, the white will be the neutral, and the green will be the ground. And it is wired, we knew it was correct. So we'll remember that this, based upon, we can know which side is the line in or the hot based on it's the small of the two prongs. And it's also a brass screw versus the other side. This is an older plug, so it's really dirty. You can't tell, but on the newer plugs, it's gonna be a silver screw. And I always remember black to brass. They both start with B. So we'll remove this plug. I've got plenty of wire here. So to speed it up, what I'm gonna do is take my diagonal cutters and I'm just gonna cut these off because I don't like reusing those anyways. And for the plug I'm gonna use, you'll see the difference. Now, if I didn't have a lot of wire, I wouldn't have done that. I'd have spent the time to take it out. Another thing to notice is that this is a metal box and I can tell it's fed with MC cable. And this ground is obviously connected to the panel in some way because our plug showed that it was correct wiring. It didn't show open ground. But now what we need to do is we need to ground this box because it's a metal box. So what we'll do is we'll add a pigtail, which is one of these. It's a ground wire with a ground screw. I'm gonna add it into this box into that hole right there. Sometimes you'll see that it actually have a little thing uh, bumped out that has a place for a ground screw in it. And uh, there's not one of those in this box. So I'm gonna use this hole. And if it's not tapped, then what I'll do is I'll tap it myself with a bit. So that hole is tapped to accept a 10 30 second screw. So now I'll get that in there. Get that tightened up. And now what I want to do is I want to connect this pigtail with this ground wire. And then we will also connect that to our device or our outlet. So now you can see I have a black wire, a white wire, I have a ground wire for my device or my outlet, and I also have the ground wire connected to the MC cable and to our metal box. Again, if you're using a plastic box, this isn't a step that you need to take. But if you have a metal box and it's not properly grounded, you need to take the time to make sure and do that. So now what we need to do is we need to hook up the plug. And you'll notice I've called it plug, outlet, receptacle, all sorts of different things just within this one video. So whenever it comes to plugs, you have a couple options. Uh, one would be the standard type that you're gonna find at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's, and it's the cheapest version, is one that has these push-in connectors or push-in terminals. Stab connectors is what they call them. Uh, I don't like using those. I don't recommend that anybody uses those because it just, they, they tend to come out later. They cause damage to the wire. All sorts of things can happen with that. Or you can loop your wire around these terminals and mechanically turn these screws to tighten it down. Uh, that's the better option on these. 
However, I'm going to use this sort of plug and it's called a back wire plug. And you can see that it's got slots for the wires to go into, just like a stab connector type thing. But the screws also, as you fasten those, it pulls that wire tight and puts a clamping pressure on it. This is a necessary thing if you're using stranded wire because it's really hard, not easy, not recommended to loop stranded wire around a terminal. I mean, you can do it, I've seen it done, but it's, it's, it's not ideal. So the ground wire doesn't have uh, the stab option. So as I do this, if you have a plug that's one of these type where you have to loop all of them, the way that I put this ground wire on is how you would put all the wires onto your plug. So to tighten this, I'm gonna be turning it in a clockwise motion. So I wanna make sure that I loop my ground wire to go in that same direction. So I'm going to turn it, and then now you can see, as I put that wire on, and then I'm going to cinch it tight. As I turn this screw, it's going to go in the same direction as that loop. And again, I'm not sure how good the lighting is or how well the camera work is. I'm working by myself, so it might be shaky. So now we're gonna wire up the neutral, which is the silver side or the longer of the two. Uh, you just put that in, tighten up your screw, and you want it to be tight. Make sure there's no play. And then, a big thing that you want to pay attention to, I'm not going to be putting any wires in, in this one. This would be if I'm running to another plug that's in that series. But I see how loose that screw is from the factory? You want to make sure that you tighten that up because you don't want a loose connection there where you're going to have current running and arcing maybe, possibly. So you want to make sure you tighten up whatever, whatever you're not using on the outlet. Make sure that you tighten that back up. Now for the black wire, let me get that through here so it's clean. Goes on the brass side, and remember, black to brass. Tighten that up. And then also check the other, tighten that up. Now what we wanna do is push the wires back into the box as nice and as possible. Get our screws started and put back in. See if I can move you there. I'm not right in your way. Now after I get the screw started, I like to go ahead and press that back in there. And I'm gonna show you again, if I tighten these all the way, since I'm not connected to the drywall, I'm gonna have the same issue as that last plug did. So if I tighten them, you can see with my cover plate, I've got quite a gap. So then what the last person did was they loosened these until they had the ears even with the drywall. And then as you put that plate on, you see it gets better, but now look look how much I can move that plug. So nobody wants that either, especially in a metal box. So what I'm gonna recommend doing is get you some shims like these. They sell these at Home Depot and Lowe's. And what you do is, based upon however much thickness you need, you fold these over. I'm gonna say that this one's gonna take probably two and then you just tear that off. Same thing, I'm gonna have another one. And then you put this slot over your screws on your plug like this, and you tighten that in, and that's gonna, one, bring the plug out with the drywall, but also hold it tight to the box so that you don't get that wiggle. 
So now let's do that now. I'm going to loosen up the plug. Sometimes you don't have to take the screws all the way out. You just got to take them out enough to be able to fit your shims back in there. Just mostly depends on how many shims that you got to use. I'm going to slide that onto the screw. Slide this one onto the screw. And sometimes you got to play around. Sometimes you might think it's going to be two and it's going to take three. So you can just add another one. Just keep going until you get, get it right. I'm going to check and see if my plug is straight. That looks good. And now you can see if I take this plate and put it on, I have the correct amount of plug sticking out from the cover. So it's better than flush anyways. And then also, I can't wiggle that plug. It's not moving at all. So now all that's left is to put on the screw for the cover plate. And then here's where my OCD kicks in. And you guys let me know what you do. But I have to have all my screws horizontal like that. And I do that so that to me it's in the same plane as all these other straight lines. You got all these lines and I want that to look the same. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there. I've got an electrician friend named Alan. I'll shout out to him who believes that the screw should be faced like that because it's in the same plane as these posts. Uh, what do you think? Are you a vertical person? Or are you a horizontal person? And if you're crazy, I guess maybe you're a diagonal person. Let me know what you do in the comments. Let me know which way you prefer. It's just a preference thing. There's no reason behind anything as far as you have to. But I'm just curious to know. Curious to know if you're a horizontal or a vertical. Well, that's how to install a plug. Uh, now I'm going to go back to the panel. The last thing we need to do is flip the breaker back on and then test it again. And as you can see, we've got the two lights again. Two lights mean correct wiring. So now we've got a secure plug, one that's not moving, one that is at the correct uh, amount sticking out from the face plate. And I hope that this is helpful to you. Maybe you're out there, again, and you just wanna change the color of your outlets. I know I see a lot of outlets where these are inset because they're back in there too far. So using those shims is very helpful and it makes sure that you've got that secure connection as far as to the box to where you can do it to where you don't have the wiggle that you might have. Or maybe you've got some outlets that are wiggling. That's another way to fix those. Uh, let me know what you think about this video. Uh, again, I hope to have more how-to videos. Some might be geared towards a homeowner. Some might be geared towards maintenance men. Uh, sometimes whenever we get into tips and tricks and things of that nature. But like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you uh, would like to see more content like this let me know down in the comments some things that you might be interested in seeing uh, maybe i'll that way i'll have a heads up on if i'm about to do something of that nature maybe i'll have a mindset to take a video of it but i hope that y'all have a blessed day uh, everybody stay safe and i'll see you guys on the next video